In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Peace, love, and unity are all marks of true friendship. For the times in which we fail to become friends with our Lord and Savior, we pause and ask him for his mercy and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all of the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord, we pray, that being rightly conformed to the Paschal Mysteries, what we celebrate and joy may protect and save us with perpetual power. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The apostles and presbyters, in agreement with the whole church, decided to choose representatives and to send them to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas. The ones chosen were Judas, who was called Barsabbas, and Silas, leaders among the brothers. This is the letter delivered by them. The apostles and presbyters, your brothers, to the brothers in Antioch, Syria, and Cilicia of Gentile origin, greetings. Since we have heard that some of our number who went out without any mandate from us have upset you with their teachings and disturbed your peace of mind, we have with one accord decided to choose representatives and to send them to you along with our beloved Bar Barnabas and Paul, who have dedicated their lives to the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we are sending Judas and Silas, who will also convey the same message by word of mouth, it is the decision of the Holy Spirit and of us not to place on you any burden beyond the, these necessities, namely, to abstain from meat sacrificed to idols, from blood, from meats of strangled animals, and from unlawful marriages. If you keep free of these, you will be doing what is right. Farewell. And so they were sent on their journey. Upon their arrival in Antioch, they called the assembly together and delivered the letter. When the people read it, they were delighted with exhortation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will give you thanks among the peoples, O Lord. I will, I will give, give you thanks, thanks among the peoples, O Lord. My heart is steadfast, O God. My heart is steadfast. I will sing and chant praise. Awake, O oh my soul, awake, lyre and harp. I will awake the dawn. I will give you thanks among the peoples, O oh Lord. I will give thanks to you among the peoples, O oh Lord. I will chant your praise among the nations. For your mercy towers to the heavens and your faithfulness to the skies. Be exalted above the heavens, O oh God. Above all the earth be your glory. I will give you thanks among the peoples, O Lord. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. I call you, my friend, says the Lord, for I have made known to you all that the Father has told me. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory unto you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, 
This is my commandment. Love one another as I love you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves, because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends, because I have told you everything I have heard from my father. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you, and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. This I command you, love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know whether or not I speak for Father Brad, but my time in seminary, especially in formation, was sometimes what I would consider to be a squirrely affair. You never knew exactly who to trust or whether or not their theology was the most appropriate one. So I remember one day going to my spiritual director telling him those specific things, uh, some of the anxieties that I had, and he told me, all you have to do is worry about two things. Surround yourself with the right books and the right friends, and then your formation will be complete. Now, that sounds pretty good on paper, and ultimately he ended up being right, but it seems like sort of a subjective affair as well. Which books are the right books? How do I know that my theology, or the ones that I'm looking into, is perhaps the most important, is perhaps the correct one? But leaving that aside, thinking about the other side of the spectrum, what about friendships? How do we know that the friends that we surround ourselves with are the real friends, the legitimate ones, the ones who are really going to help us in the course of our journey. Jesus begins to get at that in today's gospel from John. And one of the things I think that should bring us some comfort and consolation is that we should consider Christ himself to be one of those. Jesus says that he is our friend, and that should make us feel a little bit better in the midst of it all. But in the midst of these exhortations from John, over and over again, he tells us what true friendship looks like. And of course, it has some various characteristics. It's filled with charity. There has to be unity. And of course, there's always compassion. When I start to think about the friendships that I have in my life, I have to judge those friendships based upon uh, those particular standards. How do we see charity often lived out in our relationships? Is there unity of mind and heart? Do we think things through the same way, or are we sort of on different planets? And is there compassion that's exercised? Are we willing to help each other out, especially when times get difficult? Having those particular friendships, spiritual ones, throughout our journey, often I think are the most important to help us realize exactly who Christ is. Because ultimately, it's in the relationships that we share with people that we see the love that God has for us, the love that's often manifest and revealed to us in the actions of our brothers and sisters. What's interesting in that first reading that we heard today is that you see the manifestation of true friendship lived in a certain way in the very early church. You start to see Paul and Barnabas who are going about preaching at all the different churches And eventually when they arrive at a particular church, people are waiting, they're hungry, to hear the words from their friends. When the letter is delivered, and they actually hear the words of the letter, the reading ends up saying that they were delighted with exhortation. Actually, one of the other translations used the words encouraged. They were actually given a little bit more strength to continue on the hard work of proclaiming the gospel. And all it was was mere words from compatriots, mere words from friends that really gave them the strength to continue on, to do the work that they're called to do. Preaching the good news of the gospel in our constant discernment, our constant sifting through the things of life, can often be quite the difficult challenge. And sometimes we feel that we're doing it all by ourselves. But we have to realize, I think, that our formation comes not just in the books that we read, but it also comes in the relationships we have, the friendships that we continue to enkindle. 
Jesus' invitation is to find friends who are going to be compassionate, who are actually going to be unified in spirit, and who show charity to one another. Are those the friends that you keep? And do they encourage you along the way in your journey of faith as you do the difficult work of proclaiming the good news to others? As we prepare to celebrate the Eucharist today, we rejoice in the friendships that we have, we thank God for their blessing, but we ask God for the grace and the courage to be the same type of friends to them, to lead them in encouragement in the spirit so that they too might do the hard work of proclaiming the good news to all. We stand to place before our God all of our prayers of petition and of need. For all of the leaders in our church, our clergy, and our lay leaders who encourage us constantly in our spiritual friendships, may we hold each other up and accountable. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we might show our spiritual communion with all of our brothers and sisters, exercising charity, unity, and compassion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that as our churches begin to reopen, we might continue to once again re-enkindle our friendships with our brothers and sisters whom we have not seen for so long. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead who have gone before us marked with the sign of faith, and for those for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the prayers to petition and need that we offer up in the silence of our hearts. O oh God, you have made known to us the Father's will. May we always count you among our friends and continue to show that same friendships to all of our brothers and sisters. Provide the needs that we place before your altar through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of the spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 
Holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Who is on high in the high heavens? Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Who is in the highest? You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face, Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant us peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to each other the sign of peace. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, 
Miserere in hobis, angus dei, qui tolis peccatam hundi, don han hobis pahachem. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of the sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Amen.